René von Schomberg, with more than 700 citations, you're one of the most quoted authors on responsible innovation, and for about a decade, you worked at the European Commission in the area of responsible research and innovation. What did you try to achieve during this time, and what were your most important achievements? Well, um, let me emphasize what I try to achieve, because uh, we are not completely there, uh, far from there yet. I think it uh, goes on four levels. Uh, that's uh, first, uh, I mean, a decade ago it was more about addressing the deficits of uh, the previous science and society programs which had been across Europe uh, for a couple of decades. Uh, secondly, it was uh, conceptual work across, uh, you know, f theoretical conceptual work among different uh, scientific disciplines uh, and um, third uh, we want to have some institutional change and uh, the fourth is the regional differences globally concerning the deficits of the science and society programs not just from the commission but uh, generally in, in Europe uh, I think uh, I will highlight some not all uh, because there were many actually I think one was that um, they were, um, uh, there was a lack of focus on uh, what I have called uh, what, uh, what would be the right impacts of research and innovation. There was a lot of concentration on risk and on risk assessment and things like that. This is of course all necessary, um, but uh, the, 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 uh, the other side of the, of the of the matter, you know, what we want to get out of science and research was unhighlighted. Maybe uh, also important what to mention was that in all these science and society programs over decades, uh, companies actually didn't participate and uh, they are the innovators. On the conceptual theoretical level, I, I worked on different strands and different periods and um, they more or less merged into uh, what I now use as an umbrella concept called responsible innovation, but uh, it's backed by a theory of collective co-responsibility in terms of ethics. It's um, backed by some policy analysis, legal studies, um, and then uh, the type of studies which, uh, you know, traditionally and also still now occupy this field had to, had to be given a different role, I think. Um, so that was notably, uh, for example, the field of ethics uh, that was predominantly a field of evaluating uh, technologies, new technologies, but an evaluative matter, so uh, a post factum matter, and as a, an ethics of constraints, you know, what we should not do, uh, whether it was on nano, on bio, or, or whatever. But it was not what I have called the constructive effort, what, how we can design technologies, uh, a more normative uh, approach to, uh, to technology design, but also to innovation management. And then I think importantly is also that we needed some institutional change. Um, I think the different actors in the field which uh, would work together towards responsible innovation um, have to step up their roles, uh, I think notably uh, public authorities, and um, there should be a more uh, concerted uh, action in this field. You know, um, the major objective of uh, my original concept of responsible innovation is that we want to drive innovations towards, uh, uh, <clears throat> towards societal desirable impacts, so desirable outcomes. So how are we going to do this? what type of mechanisms we need, and that requires institutional change. Then I think there, was, uh, there is a need for um, a global addressing responsible innovation. I initiated uh, some, um, um, some, some actions in China and US, uh, elsewhere, to, to, get, uh, to, get this, uh, to have this at a global dimension. And uh, notably in uh, China, this uh, resonated very well. What kind of organizations were most open-minded for the concept of responsible research and innovation, and which ones were most reluctant? 
I think the most reluctant are precisely those which we want to push more into, um, into the field. And these are public authorities. And, they, uh, and, and this includes the European Commission initially as well. In a context where um, public authorities have retreated from the field because of, a, uh, of a, an ever more market-oriented uh, approach in, in, in the world, has led to a situation that, um, that I think they retreated too much. Uh, and uh, so they have to regain ground uh, by doing things also in a different manner. And one of these manners is, is trying to get uh, different actors together and to allocate them role and also give them responsibilities which they themselves would not have if they are not allocated by public authorities. Um, so, um, and this will lead to the production of new instruments which uh, can guide innovation management particular codes of conduct, agreements, and private-public par private partnerships, all kinds of partnerships. You mentioned the Science in Society program. Well, mm -hmm. there is quite a tradition in European research funding to have science combined with society, to science and society, yep. science in society, science with and for society, and from 2020 onwards there will be no successor. Oh. And we are told that now this will be embedded in the missions. What is your view on the missions? We see now that 50% of, uh, of the next framework program, which is a uh, 100 billion euro program, from which 15 billion will be spent on societal challenges. So there is an enormous possibility now to, to have responsible innovation embedded and directed towards the societal challenges in tough terms of co-design of missions and co-design of research programs, uh, open research agendas involving more actors. So although the, the concept of RRI is not um, apart from a small program where it's still mentioned but uh, not systematically anymore as a cross-cutting program, it is uh, in its design there. RRI combines responsible research and responsible innovation. Mm -hmm. Do you think they are very similar application areas, responsible research and responsible innovation, or are these two different playgrounds? There's the problem already in the allocation of who will benefit from good research or responsible research, or who will benefit from responsible innovation. The, the unpredictability of the allocation of own impacts has a different dynamic in research and innovation. So, so in that sense, uh, uh, it is different. What is interestingly different is also um, the way uh, we compete in research and in innovation. Innovation is seen, of course, by definition as, a, as competition. Competition among uh, companies or competition even between trade partners and so on, blocks, countries. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's drowned into competition. But um, responsible, both responsible research and responsible innovation actually require much more collaboration than we do now. Um, research has become too competitive, and this is actually jeopardizes uh, responsible research. Uh, it undermines also the quality of research. But innovation, uh, by, by, by its nature of being competitive, it would look strange to say we need to collaborate more on innovation. But this is exactly what we need at the global, at the global level. And that means that uh, we have to work together, of course, on the global challenges. You know, this is one of the things, uh, you know, we can say this is a societal desirable outcome. We will have to work on issues of climate change, uh, food security, etc. But they play out differently in the different regions in the world. When talking about research, many people think about researchers at universities. When we talk about innovation, many people think about business. How open is the business sector for adopting responsibility in their innovation processes? Now, if you look to uh, the, uh, the, the, the big companies like Unilever or DSM or Axo Nobel, they have received the insight that you as a global big business can only sustain yourself if you address the societal challenges as well in a broader context, and that you have to do a long-term investment. This is, of course, 
the first requirement which you need to have or insight as a CEO at the top level of a company, okay, we want to invest in that for the long term. Now this is in itself a challenge. Some companies do that and some companies don't. The drive for short-term profits, um, which is apparently in this age where we live in now, much bigger than, for instance, in the 1960s and 70s, where you still have long-term investment by also by big companies or by pension funds, etc. This seems to uh, uh, be on the decline, and that's doesn't that's so to speak, an uphill struggle back again to regain this ground, to regain, uh, regain ground where public authorities have to come in and say, well, for some things we have, we have gone too far in the privatization of public goods. Uh, and this is, a, this is the area of public domain which has to be regained. So, and then, of course, for the small business, you cannot expect small businesses or SMEs to to have the same long-term investment as uh, these big companies can do and should do, in my view, if they take up uh, this responsibility. But um, what they can do is uh, what you see also when I mentioned we need more cooperation. And also the small companies need to cooperate more. Is there a business case for responsible innovation? Does it pay off for companies? Uh, the, the question is, is when do you uh, step on the train? And um, some want to step up earlier and some want to step up later. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a matter then sometimes also of an assessment. If you step up too late, it will become actually more costly than when you step up earlier. So I think for the big companies, it's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite urgent to step up early, I think. The five pillars which were put forward by the European Commission, the European Commission's definition of responsible innovation, so ethics, gender, education, openness and public engagement, at least to my experience, are quite difficult to explain to companies. Mm -hmm. Did you come across other conceptualizations of responsible innovation that are easier to link up with corporate practices? My definition of responsible innovation had two major components which then immediately also are re responds to your question. And that's uh, the mutual responsiveness of actors with a view on uh, societal desirable outcomes. You can translate that maybe now to the societal challenges, if you wish, because this is something, or the global sustainable de development goals, because this is what we all globally actually agree upon. Um, so if you, and, and which is now also uh, the objectives in the new Horizon Europe program. So again, so this, this is again a step forward uh, in terms of RRI implemented in Horizon Europe without mentioning it, but we have these objectives now in there. And then importantly, what I said in the beginning, we need mechanisms. We don't only need to state that we want to have these objectives because what then happens is that everybody can still apply for money and do whatever they want and say, okay, I'm going to address climate change. No, we need to have mechanisms in place which actually drive innovation towards them. So um, there is the element uh, 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 the, and the, the mechanisms are not the five pillars. Um, so the, uh, the five pillars in this is in a certain way a regress about what I proposed. Uh, because the problem with, with, these, um, with these pillars is that if you work on them, you lose sight of what I was just trying to say as the major, uh, major uh, objectives. Another way how to explain responsible innovation to business is to link up with concepts they already apply. So, for example, open innovation, design thinking, crowdsourcing, all of these kind of ways how to make people, to involve people into innovation processes, to mm -hmm. make innovation processes more participatory yes. on the one hand, and on the other hand to assess future impacts of innovations, similar as technology assessment. Now, to my experience, both concepts are well known and explaining to businesses that responsible innovation is design thinking plus technology assessment sounds a little bit like old methods. Um, what is responsible innovation on top of open innovation mm -hmm. and technology assessment? Let's take the example of technology assessment. 
I think technology assessment as a field has evolved in Europe uh, very good. I have excellent uh, work has been done, excellent studies as well. And you can say it's anticipatory because these studies, I, they mention, uh, you know, early on what type of a societal impact you can expect from certain development and so on and so on. But that's something else uh, as saying that the system or the innovation system in which we live have become anticipatory. I think the difference really is uh, to make the societal objective prior to the technological potential and uh, not just look to the responsible development of the technology but look to the innovation context. To my experience there are three types of companies. Some companies we could call the dark sphere. These are the ones that produce goods and services which by themselves are a risk or a threat to society. Just think of as yes, manufacturer of military sector, drones, weapons. Some even would call the oil sector as a threat for the climate. I think to them, responsible innovation questions their whole business model. There is the nice playground where the social entrepreneurs live. For them, being responsible is part of their mission. So the whole business model is about responsibility. I think for the, picking them as good cases, it's not really transferable to the middle ground, which is the average company. The average company which mm. is not a super threat to our future and mm. which still has not responsibility as part of their DNA. And I think most of the companies are in this middle area. Um, for them, competition and time to market is a challenge. And including or, in, or integrating responsibility into their innovation, they perceive sometimes as time consuming. So opening participatory processes takes time. Technology assessment takes time. How could we translate the concept of responsible innovation to them, keeping in mind that they are in harsh time pressure? If you or want to address the societal challenges with innovation, you need to become more open in, uh, in the discovery phase of uh, science. I don't say that you, you, you cannot compete or patent later on. I mean, uh, that, that's all fine. But uh, we, have done, we have overdone that. You see that it enters the discovery phase. Now, you have a brilliant example from um, the so-called Structural Genome Consortium in England, in Oxford. That's a research group which really does open science in the right way. So they sh share globally their data instantly with electronic notebooks. Um, they work, uh, they, so they, they share knowledge and, and, and um, data prior to, to publishing. And by doing so, and, and they have, by, by the way, established a public-private partnership with industry to, res uh, to, um, to um, share uh, laboratory resources and so on. And it helped them to bring down the timeline uh, from uh, medical products from, what, an average of 20 years, in more than 20 cases to one to two years. So it was a dramatic uh, increase. And they focused on, uh, on kinases or on certain enzymes which can deliver on diseases which are under-researched by all other partners. So the big companies, again, the four or five big companies, they focus on 50% of the available kinases which are relevant for diseases, all the others they ignore because it's, they think it's not, not interesting for making money, you know, like the malaria example again. So this consortium worked on the other elements, on, the, on, the, on the rare diseases and others. So they were successful there. So you see that open, open science, open innovation is here, of course, completely interlinked and, um, and it works. When it, when it comes to these big societal uh, challenges, it's about transformational change. And, um, well, who are prior responsible for that? These are, of course, the bigger actors. So these are not the, 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 what you call the great companies. These are first big companies and the public authorities. 
And uh, so this is this dynamic, the disbalance first has to change. Public authorities have to regain ground in this field. Uh, and uh, the, the big companies, you know, uh, uh, we are dependent on, in a certain way, on the goodwill or good insight of some CEOs. Some do it, some don't. You have uh, actually three innovation paradigms. It's one is uh, where you have state-controlled technologies in the area of uh, of, uh, of the nuclear, except for, for in energy to some extent. The, you have market-driven innovation, and you have what I call a third pillar, responsible innovation, which has an, also another dynamic. And these three paradigms can actually coexist uh, in, a, in a certain way. Um, but the balance needs to be uh, different. So um, the, in, in some areas where you say, well, in some areas the markets also work well. I mean, you can say there's still innovation which is useful when it, for example, um, increases in energy, energy efficiency. For that, you hardly need public uh, policies because anything which is more cheap and more efficient will also have automatically a market because this is so this will work. But of course, these type of innovations are not part of the transform transformational change because even if you have very efficient cars and people buy five of them or so whatever, then you're still the same problem. So you, you, you can only have this transformational change if the other actors come in. In your new international handbook, you provide a re global resource on responsible innovation. Are there any differences between the European countries regarding their openness for responsible research and innovation? Some countries like Germany or Netherlands, uh, we have more institutions on technology assessment. We have, um, like the Netherlands has since uh, 2008, I believe, uh, a specific program, uh, funding program on responsible, research, on responsible innovation. So uh, there are institutional things there which, of course, uh, uh, makes it uh, that in those countries there are relatively more people engaged with it than in some other countries in Europe. Uh, I have tried to couple uh, responsible innovation to uh, the basic values we have in the European Treaty. Uh, yeah, I, I did that uh, for the following reason. That is that, uh, and this is also a, a global issue actually, that science and technology has always been an objective in itself rather than coupled to, to the values and uh, normative requirements. We have, for example, in constitutions and in policies or in the European Treaty, which actually are drivers for all other policies. So we have these, um, normative anchor points, I've called them, which drive environmental policy and even trade policy of Europe, but doesn't drive science and technology policy. Science and technology policy is always seen as a goal in itself and uh, justified in terms of macroeconomic uh, um, arguments. Now this, in my proposition is that we in Europe should make science and technology at the same level as all the other European policies. So let's say that environmental policy and science and technology policy should be driven by the same values. The, the old paradigm is that it doesn't really matter what science and technology produces because any innovation is good. Any innovation contributes to our economy. Now this paradigm doesn't work anymore, in my view. But more plays a role, I think, is uh, what role those countries have in the context of these global challenges. And, and that you see in the handbook as well, uh, when it comes to China or India, and of course they, come, uh, they have another role as, an, as a major actor in the global field. Has it now become a global concept? Uh, India has an impressive record of um, doing what uh, is called, as you probably know, frugal innovation. And it's, it's, it, is, it comes close to responsible innovation. It's 
responsible innovation is a very ambitious concept. So I always say it's more vision than the reality, but the Indians do extremely well. Uh, from the Chinese perspective, um, as I said, the, the internal challenges are very big. They have to overcome uh, enormous income gaps. The question is, which role innovation plays in there? Does it increase it further, increase it, or can it help to overcome it? And if you want to let, you want to opt for the latter, you have to to prioritize particular technologies or particular innovations over others, and and this is what the Chinese government is doing, and I think it's it's a wise, it's a wise decision. Thank you very much.